Okay, thanks, thanks, Dick, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so, like uh, like a lot of these presentations that we had yesterday, uh, this isn't just me. Uh, there's a, a big team who've been uh, working on kind of using schema.org in uh, in ocean data over the last while, and um, so there's some co-authors listed, he listed here, um, and I'd like to thank them. But there's also uh, some of the people who aren't listed, and we'll uh, we'll get to them in a little bit, hopefully. Um, so why are, we, why are we here talking about uh, schema.org and <clears throat> linked data and linked ocean data? So back at the uh, IMDIS conference in, uh, I think it was 2013 in Luca, uh, I presented um, on linked data for uh, ocean science and oceanography. And so this is kind of, a, kind of the next step, really, um, looking at how we can use one of these common patterns that's been developed by uh, an industry outside our own sphere and use it to make our data more findable, more accessible, more interoperable, and more reusable. And when we're talking about findable, there's really only one game in town, isn't there, about finding things. If, uh, if somebody says they're gonna look for something on the internet, on the web, what do they invariably say? I'm gonna go and Google it. And I think what, we, what we're going to try and uh, show through this presentation is how we may be able to get our data sets findable in this way uh, and hook them up into a powerful search engine, a powerful search tool that's available for us to use. So that ticks off the F of FAIR. But even, so one of, the, one of the things we were talking about with interoperability is around how we, uh, how we kind of coalesce the language, the dialects that, that we're using to talk about our data. So the picture that's uh, up here is, uh, if you know your Bible stories, it's the Tower of Babel. And it's kind of the inverse of what we're trying to do a little bit here with the schema.org. So in the, in the story of the Tower of Babel, everybody starts off with one language, they build the tower towards heaven, and they uh, end up with a huge number of different languages. What we're trying to do with schema.org is reduce the number of languages, dialects that we're using to talk about our data, uh, uh, almost an inverse Tower of Babel. And I guess you could, uh, you could kind of make an analogy to something like uh, Esperanto, uh, a, a kind of common tool for using uh, for, for language. And again, like by using schema.org, one of the situations we want to try and avoid is developing our own standards to do this. There's a standard that's been developed uh, by a group of people who are using it, and it's being used heavily, it's being used commercially. Why come up with something, another of our own standards when there's something else out there that we can already use? So that kind of gets us into, uh, into talking about interoperability. What we'll come back to towards the end as we, uh, as we think about some considerations for where we might take this work in the future is about making our data accessible and reusable through, through this kind of tooling as well. So a little bit of background. Hopefully you weren't paying too much attention in uh, Alexandra's talk yesterday because uh, some of these slides may look very familiar if, uh, if you were paying a lot of attention. So, <laughs> so Tim Berners-Lee the father of the web, um, and it was his vision even from the early days of the web that we would be putting, we would be putting data, not just, uh, not just documents up there onto the web. And linked data in particular is about this web of data, and it's about creating the connections between data uh, objects that you're putting online and then using them to connect into other pieces so that you can, you can build up your knowledge base through uh, kind of connecting the dots between these data pieces that you're putting online. And again, sorry, but just, just to really reinforce what we're talking about here, we'll go through the four principles of linked data. So the first thing is that you use web addresses to name things. So going back to uh, our favorite searching example, if you, uh, if you go online and you search for Barcelona in, in uh, your favorite search tool, at the top here, you'll see that the first hit, uh, certainly from the Irish version of Google, is the Wikipedia entry for Barcelona, which has a very nice, clean web address that's used to identify all of that information 
that's on that page, that document is, is addressable through that web address there. And actually one of the things that you really want to try and do, and, and it came across in Alexandra's talk yesterday, is make these addresses quite clean so that they're understandable and they're easily reused. Okay, so the second thing is to make these addresses um, so that you can look them up. So you go to that, that HTTP address and you can look it up using your web browser. And it appears in your web browser because you can look it up. So you make it addressable and you allow it to be looked up. And then you use web standards when the addresses are looked up. So the reason that that page displays in your browser is because it uses a common set of standards, HTML, and then it's styled up using CSS, and then there may be JavaScript in the background to do some more fancy things. But, but the key standards here, HTML, CSS, those are the web standards for the plain documents on the web. And then you include links to other web resources. So back in our favorite search tool, there's, there's links everywhere. But the links I wanna draw your attention to on this particular page are things like the things to do in Barcelona at the bottom and the information panel on the right hand side where there's some more information about famous people from Barcelona, about what the weather's like, about you know, how to get here. All of that comes because Google are harvesting information that has been described in the linked web pages using structured data described using this schema.org format that has been developed. And so they're using these linked data principles, they're using the schema.org dialect, and it's appearing here. And one of the, uh, one of the other things that you might be familiar with, if you, uh, if you use Gmail as your mail provider, and then you, uh, you book a flight, and the flight information comes into your Gmail, then when you log into Google, it'll tell you that your flight is coming. This again is schema.org at work. You, you won't know it necessarily, but this is because the flight info, the email with the booking contains the snippet in schema.org to give you this rich set of information on your, on your uh, browser. Okay, so in terms of what we've been doing in linked data um, in the past, there's all kinds of different dialects, just as there are uh, in any language, I guess, but in, in English, uh, certainly in the part of England that, that I'm from originally, there's dialect words for all kinds of different things. And if you say one thing, you might mean something completely different to somebody else. So again, the reason why we're looking at schema.org as a way of, of dealing with this is it's a dialect that various uh, tools can understand. And the tooling that has been driving, the companies that have been driving the development of schema.org as a dialect for structured data are the main search engines. They're Google, Microsoft, Yandex, Yahoo. They all understand this dialect of schema.org and they can take the information, they can do things with it as we've just seen in those examples. Okay, you might think, well, that's all, all well and good, but what about the sorts of data that, that we're talking about uh, in the in the in this conference over these few days. Well, one of the uh, one of the key developments, I guess, that's been it's been bubbling under for a few years is the fact that they they have a data set um, schema.org description. And so, what you do if you go to this web page on schema.org, you can see um, the description of a data set, and that is a body of structured information describing some topics of interest. Marine data, structured information of topics of interest. And there's a whole bunch of um, fields that you can then use to describe your, your data set. And they include all the kind of normal things about uh, a description, um, what data catalog it's, it's used in, any types of uh, citations, um, what parameters have been measured, what units of measure you've used for those parameters, and then you can link out to the organization responsible for collecting it and, and all the kinds of things that we want to be doing with our data catalogs. And then one of the, one of the uh, things that, that has been worked on as well in the background, so you take 
um, that dataset, schema.org description, and you can go to um, a page up on Google where they are describing how they expect to see this implemented. Okay, and so again, the key thing here is that they're expecting to see data sets, that data sets are structured information and they're easier to find when you've got all the supporting information associated with them. So this is, this is why it's important for our data. If we want to make it really, really findable using the tools that everybody wants to be using to find data, then there's, there's tools and there's information in place to help us to do that. So what have we done so far? So if you, uh, I, I think a lot of you will probably know about the, uh, the ERDAP data server. Um, it's a, a piece of software that comes uh, from NOAA, from um, one of the labs over in California, in Monterey. And um, it was mentioned yesterday as a way of, of uh, kind of downloading uh, data. And it provides a kind of, it provides a kind of restful interface. You can build queries against uh, against your ERDAP server to actually access uh, data values. But when you go to um, an ERDAP page, and it kind of reminds me of something that uh, Seb was saying in his talk on, uh, on IMOS data yesterday, that it's not, this isn't a friendly system for most people to, to look at. So um, we'll talk tomorrow about uh, some work that we've done to kind of um, make this more accessible to, to normal users. But when you, when you just turn up at uh, an instance of the ERDAP server, you're faced with a, a page that looks something like this. And there's a, there's a little button at the top there that says there's uh, X number of data sets available from this ERDAP server. And you can click on that, and you can go through to get a list of all the data sets that are available there. OK, that's fine. Associated with each of these data sets, is a, a suite of metadata that you can uh, that you can drill down into, and it's represented in a few different a few different ways. But importantly, one of them is uh, is on a page that the search engines know how to index. So um, if you click on this little M uh, associated with a data set, then you can go through into the metadata page, and you can see again it's all the same kinds of information that you're looking for. A lot of this comes from uh, CF type attributes, but it's, again, descriptions of the data, what parameters, what the, uh, what the units are, what the range of the data is. And so work that we've done in the, in the Marine Institute over, um, over the last year has been to take this uh, page within the ERDAP server and embed some of those schema.org tags that we were talking about. So uh, in the latest version of ERDAP that you can go on to GitHub and download, when you build a page like this, if you run it through a tool that can understand schema.org, including Google's tooling, you'll see the structured data details that are uh, embedded in there. So you'll see that this is a type data set. So Google, Google's tooling is understanding that this page is describing a data set, that it has uh, this AIS MetHydro name. It understands where to get the description from. It understands where this lives on the web. So it's, it's linked data. This is an addressable piece of information that you can go away and look up. And there's some structured data there using web standards that's delivered. And all the keywords from um, the CF standard names, from the GCMD vocabularies, uh, all come through here as well. So, you can find within uh, search tooling that knows about this, you can find uh, things by that kind of keyword search. Okay, so that's available for, you, for anybody who wants to use it in the latest version of ERDAP. And recently, Google uh, launched, uh, it's only in beta at the moment, but they launched uh, this toolbox um, for dataset search. And so Alexandra very briefly showed um, some of this yesterday. Um, but what happens here is we're searching on uh, marine.ie. So um, we're searching for anything that comes from uh, a marine.ie domain name within this Google toolbox. And you can see that the structured information from the ERDAP data server at the Marine Institute in Ireland is being held here. So, um, sorry, there's a couple of, there's a couple of, um, 
There's a couple of ODAP instances that it's picked up. That's fine. So it's actually reducing duplication of search results here as well. And it says that the authors, the license, and the description. And all of that, is, again, is coming from the fact that the schema.org is embedded in that metadata page from ODAP. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we're talking about uh, findable. Um, we've talked a little bit about interoperability using um, schema.org as a, as a dialect. What about maybe pushing some of the accessibility of our data as well? So um, one, of the, one of the projects that we've been working on at the Marine Institute is a new uh, Marine Institute data catalog. Um, it's available now at data.marine.ie. Um, we'll talk a little bit uh, more about this tomorrow in one of the presentations. But again, the key thing here is that you can go in and as a human, you can interact with the, the data sets that are on this catalog. And you get through to um, just a, a normal kind of data set page there. But again, although this is standard ISO type metadata with all of the uh, tags and fields that standard ISO metadata carries with it. And I think from the session yesterday, we, we were kind of seeing that all of this kind of ISO metadata is still really important in terms of finding data, making it accessible, making it interoperable, making it reusable. Although we have the ISO metadata here, there is schema.org taken directly out of the ISO metadata in that geo network catalog. And if you run that page again through the structured data testing tools, you can see that it understands the addressable information, the structured information that's behind that web address. So again, you can see this is of a type data set. It has a name, it's one of the uh, Celtic Voyager seabed surveys that was done for the Irish seabed mapping survey. There's a description, there's an abstract there that describes the data set. Again, it's addressable by a URL, there's a time period, and then we're using um, CDataNet controlled vocabularies behind that um, catalog as well, and those are appearing there. Well, the, the plain text labels are appearing there. And so, um, as Alexandra mentioned yesterday in her, in her presentation, We've been doing a lot of work uh, on the CData Cloud project about mapping the um, catalogs from CData Cloud into um, various linked data dialects. Some of the work that is still ongoing around this is what do we do about mapping some of those things into this kind of schema.org so that um, CData Cloud speaks this dialect that, that is understood by the search engines as well. And so we've talked about data sets so far, and there's clearly some data sets up there, but we can just uh, run quickly through some of the other mapping that's, that's ongoing uh, and has been done so far. So there's an organization uh, schema as well that's described at schema.org, which is a natural fit for the Edmo information. Again, data sets, Edmed, we've done, we've done that mapping, and Alexandra talked about that yesterday. Um, there's a... There's a we haven't done the EdMERP mapping yet because there's a, a kind of pending schema. So schema.org is uh, interesting because it's still evolving. There's still uh, an active community developing some of the pieces of it. One of the pieces that is uh, due to come very soon is this project schema. Again, CDI is a, 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 a data set, um, but it's not something that we want to expose uh, particularly to the Google data set search um, because it just swamped the system. It's the wrong granularity for, for that. EdMed is a much better fit. Um, crew summary reports, there's some modeling we can do around the event schema to, to describe those as well. And there's not really anything for, there for EDIOS, but we may be able to kind of fit it to something. Um, but again, uh, I think we could look and maybe even extend and propose uh, to schema.org that there's, there's more that we can do there in the future. So we've addressed uh, findability, interoperability. We've asked a question of accessibility. Um, it's not just work that's going on uh, within Europe either. And so uh, Adam Shepard, um, who's here in the room today, uh, Doug and Doug Phils have had this uh, EarthCube project called Project 418. Um, and one of the main, well, the main goal of this project is to work with the data facilities that are funded through the National Science Foundation in the US to make use of schema.org for describing, indexing, 
and making uh, findable, making discoverable the data sets that those NSF data facilities are publishing online. And so uh, here we just have um, the goals of describing, publishing, indexing, and serving out the data. And in P418, they've uh, developed um, approaches with the Earth uh, Science Informatics Partnership on vocabulary governance and evolving the vocabularies uh, to, for describing the data through schema.org. They've worked with the NSF data facilities to adapt how they were publishing their metadata online to get the schema.org out, and then um, develop the code to get these indices, including the textual, spatial, and graphical representations. And then um, there's a geodex.org website, and some example uh, notebooks, which I think are in Jupyter, and there's APIs to access, access these data as well. So um, just to show you that this isn't something that we're working on in isolation on this side of the Atlantic, but there's work going on uh, in the US as well to kind of make, uh, make this happen for some of the earth science data that's published over there as well. And so the architecture, um, just very briefly around Project 418. So the, the data facilities have uh, landing pages where the schema.org is embedded in those pages, like we showed for the Marine Institute data catalog and for ERDAP. Um, those are, again, referenceable through the web, and there's web services for indexing uh, the data there, which allows them to be searched, uh, makes them available to tools and to workflows as well. So if you wanted to, to go through this, there's some fairly simple steps that you can, uh, you can take to get your, your metadata, your, your metadata anyway, into schema.org. So taking, taking that architecture that Project 418 have, have developed, what you really need to do is add a JSON snippet into your web pages. And this is the only code in the presentation. I'm sure you'll be glad to know. Um, <laughs> But it's not, it's not complicated, it's, it's key value pairs. So you have this uh, app context, which says this JSON snippet is schema.org. You have a app type data set, and then you're into the attributes um, that you can see on the schema.org documentation pages. You make sure that your web pages are in your sitemap.xml. So those pages that are marked up with that JSON if they're not in your sitemap.xml for your website, they are never going to make it through to uh, Google's data set search because they, they uh, solely use their crawlers to, uh, to pull, um, uh, to pull the, the, the metadata down in schema.org, and so they need to know how to find it. And then you submit your sitemap.xml to Google, and that's it. That's how you do it. Um, it, it is quite simple. So I just want to um, run through, in the last few minutes, uh, a few thoughts for where this might go in the next, uh, next few years. Again, we've, we've definitely talked about findability. We've talked about interoperability, reducing the dialect. Um, what about these other two? So really, all of this is about metadata so far. What do we do to actually unlock the data that's behind the metadata? And so... Um, I apologize for the, for the large amount of text there, but this is uh, from Google's description of how, how they expect to see uh, data sets uh, published through schema.org. And this has been very recently added. So they're saying a tabular data set is one organized primarily in terms of rows and grids. Okay, so we recognize that rows and grids as something that could go into CSV, into Excel, into MATLAB, into R, into ODV. And building on the approach that um, we've already described, they're saying CSV on the web is a way of providing them with the actual data values behind this. So there's some possible work there that we could, uh, we could do on exposing our data through CSV on the web. But that's not, so yeah, that, and, and again, just to re-emphasize that this, these types of data are very common in our, in our um, sphere and they're the types of data that we're putting into all the tools that we like to use. But CSV on the web isn't uh, the most efficient data transport format in the world. And um, so one of the things that uh, I'm working on with 
Jonathan Yu at CSIRO, uh, Mark Headley at the Met Office, and Jim Baird at, uh, at NOAA is um, a, an encoding for RDF graphs, so uh, linked data, um, for the NetCDF3, NetCDF Classic. And one of the ways that we might be able to approach uh, this kind of linking of data into the schema.org metadata is if we had a, a broker between, if we, or if we use uh, this NetCDF uh, LD um, tooling to create a, a bridge between data that's stored in a NetCDF file and CSV on the web where it's appropriate. Um, that might just uh, help us not to have to store all our data and publish it all as CSV on the web or transport it as CSV on the web. And um, one of the other things that, that isn't really clear at the moment is how we take something like a uh, parameter usage vocabulary term or any of the vocabulary terms that are published quite rightly uh, as RDF online in the vocab, ser in the vocab server that we all use in uh, CDataNet and CData Cloud and eModNet and various other projects. What is the best way of addressing those within schema.org? We haven't quite uh, agreed on what that is yet. And uh, if you just pop the URL in, then what you get back isn't the right dialect for schema.org. And so one of the things that uh, I think is being looked at in uh, Envery Fair is maybe how, how to do this. But how to publish these things as schema.org, but we just need to come up with uh, a good pattern for doing it and agree on what that pattern is. And I think that, you know, those are two thoughts that I have on, on how we could drive some of these, these other bits um, that we haven't addressed before. So just as I, uh, just as I finish, there's a few um, useful links uh, there. So um, the Google dataset search um, is, is available for people to use. It's in beta at the moment. There's uh, a couple of GitHub um, uh, pieces there that you can use, and um, we'll make these slides available anyway if anybody wants the, wants the links there. And that's the end of the presentation. <laughs>